Hey, what's up, everybody? Neanderthal Man in Search of Lost Genomes by Svante Pabo. Svante Pabo is a Swedish evolutionary geneticist. He wrote Neanderthal Man to share his experience as a scientist with the world. The work discussed in this book shines light on an interesting point that I want to ask you about at the end of the video because I want to hear what people think about this. So this book was actually quite similar to another book I reviewed on this channel, Venki Ramakrishnan's Gene Machine. Like Venki Ramakrishnan, Svante Pabo won the Nobel Prize for his contributions to his field. But whereas Ramakrishnan won the prize in chemistry for his work on the ribosome, Pabo won his prize in physiology or medicine for being the first to sequence the genome of the Neanderthals, and in doing so, showed that Neanderthals contributed DNA to the Homo sapiens genome to the tune of about 1-2% to for non-Africans. Yes, if you didn't know, unless your ancestry is strictly African, you're part Neanderthal. Svante Pablo's team is also responsible for the discovery of the Denisovans, a close relative of Neanderthals. This kind of stuff fascinates me to no end. You know, people love to learn about their genetic heritage and DNA ancestry testing. It's still popular and a really interesting thing to do. Well, if you want to know more about where you come from, you might enjoy a book like Neanderthal Man. Neanderthal Man is part science book, where you get to learn a lot about the work that geneticists do, and it's also part biography, showing the human side of science. We see collaborations turning into competitions. We see how emotions and pride feed into the work that scientists do. Pablo says, quote, Most scientists, like most people, want recognition for a job well done. They thrive on how often their papers are cited in other publications, and how many invitations they get to deliver lectures, end quote. This kind of thing was a big theme in Gene Machine, but the two books are also very different. Gene Machine was a story about a man trying to and eventually succeeding in winning the Nobel Prize, and Neanderthal Man makes not one mention of the prize, and in fact, Pabo won the prize just last year, while this book came out in 2014. This book was a joy to read, and it was written in a way to keep the reader interested in what's going on, and there's a lot that happens in this book. Pablo also does a really nice job of conveying what proper diligence looks like for a scientist. It's so much more than just making a discovery and writing a paper. Pablo goes into detail on things like objectively verifying the data, developing ways to rule out contamination, which was a huge issue, strategies for eliminating bias, getting independent replication, choosing who you want to publish the work, and all things that real science is all about. And Pablo is not shy about pointing out the differences between scientists who take care to do things the diligent way and those who don't. He points out the differences in scientists who go through great pains to ensure that their data is as accurate as possible rather than just trying to publish papers on popular or trendy or sensational work. As we follow Pablo and his team, it seems like, despite making constant progress and breakthroughs, new challenges and new setbacks are a constant issue. You really get a sense of appreciation for the amount of strife these scientists put themselves through, and it makes it so satisfying when they start publishing papers, which of course ends with the publishing of the Neanderthal genome itself and all that that entails, as well as the Denisovan DNA. Another thing this book had in common with Gene Machine, though the book never quite says this, is that so much of how science happens is being in the right place at the right time. We see how new technologies foster new breakthroughs and new discoveries feeding more new breakthroughs, and oftentimes it comes down to just knowing the right person or forming the right collaboration at the right time. And this in no way is meant to detract from the effort and intelligence and the ability of these scientists. In the case of Neanderthal Man, it's Pablo's team who are responsible for some of the technological advancements that allow them to excel in their research, where many other groups have to wait for technological improvements. But all of this does get a person thinking about the inevitability of scientific progress, and that's really a fascinating thing to spend time thinking about. I actually have a book about that, Matt Ridley's How Innovation Works. That's one I've been meaning to get or getting around to reading. Another interesting point raised in this book was 
if we can compare the DNA of modern man with more ancient man, we may be able to see a genetic basis for why humans possess things like intelligence and speech. And if we can reduce things like that down to their DNA, we'll be able to study these traits so much better. Pablo discusses on multiple occasions how we can learn so much more about a life form by analyzing their DNA than we can by studying their morphology. There seems to be a battle between the geneticists who want to get into the DNA of these bones, which involves damaging them, and the paleontologists who want to preserve them intact and study them that way. And it's really interesting to get in and read about their two opposing views. This was a super interesting book for its paleoanthropological science and for the story of a man's career in science. It kind of makes you feel like you're part of his team and it even evoked that road not taken feeling for me, thinking, what would it have been like to do something like this? Now, for that point, I wanted to ask you about, this book goes into the social political side of discovering things like how anyone outside of Africa has Neanderthal genes and how information learned here could possibly be used in antisocial ways by certain groups. Pabo went as far as to suggest patenting the Neanderthal genome so as to have control over who can use the genome and in what ways. Anyone willing to pay access to the Neanderthal genome would need Pabo's approval and would be limited to his discretion. We're talking about controlling knowledge for social reasons. Other people in Pabo's group more or less voted against this until Pabo conceded, but I want to know what you guys think about this idea of patenting a genome. Is this a good idea? Should we be able to patent a product of nature? This part of the book kind of came out of nowhere, and I found it kind of alarming, but I'd like to hear what you guys think about that. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching, and tomorrow is May 1st, and all month I will be reading nothing but Pulitzer Prize winners, so I'm excited for that. I hope you check that out, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any interest in paleoanthropology or genetics, or what it might be like in the world of a scientist, definitely check out Neanderthal Man by Svante Pabo.